Are you looking for a way to showcase some of your smaller quilts? Or maybe you're interested in trying out a pieced border on your next project. In this video, you'll find out how to make this quilt with a nine patch border set on point. Usually the border is done last, but today you'll learn how to work from the outside in using setting triangles. You can easily adapt this pattern to make small table toppers or large quilts like this blooming nine patch. Or it can be used as a frame for the small quilts featured in this series. Ready to begin? You can find this supply list below. For the light and dark fabric, I'm using neutrals, whites and grays, or different beiges because these neutrals look good with most color combinations. Something you'll appreciate when switching out the smaller quilts. To make 18 of these 4.5 inch 9 patch blocks, you'll start with strips 2 inches wide. You'll need four strips from the light fabric and five strips from the darker fabric. So one light strip to one dark strip using quarter inch seams. Add another dark strip on this side. Make two of these strip sets. Press your seams to the dark. So one dark to two lights. Press your seams to the dark. Place your strip set on one of the mat lines. This strip set should measure 5 inches across. If not, you need to go back and check your cutting, sewing, or pressing because all three of these in unison determine your accuracy. Trim to get a straight edge and then cut sections every 2 inches. You'll need 36 of these. Repeat this process with the light, dark, light sections. You'll need 18 of these. Lay out your block. You'll need two of these dark light dark sections and one light dark light section. You'll put right sides together and sew a, and then you'll add this last section. You might want to try this no pin technique. You want to lay out your block, put right sides together, Make sure to match those seams at these intersections. Pull that back and it'll sort of nestle in there. Now normally I would pin and then pull this one back and get that nestled in there and pin. But today I'm going to challenge you to try something a little bit different. So I like to sew those without pins. I've got my finger on that seam and I'm going to replace that with this stiletto or you can use the seam ripper. The stiletto is holding on to that spot. I'll with my needle down and check that seam to make sure that it was butting up against each other. And, and there's my seams. I'll take the next piece, put right sides together, nestle that in there. You notice that there's a little extra on the other side. I'm not worried so much about that. I'm mainly concerned that these seams nestle up against each other. Hold on to that with my stiletto and so Get this seam lined up, hold on to it with the stiletto and so. I'll take this over to the ironing board and press. Your square should measure 5 inches. You'll need 18 of these. When setting blocks on point, you'll need triangles to fill in these empty spaces. There are two types of setting triangles that can be cut to ensure that the straight of grain or cross grain ends up on the outside edges of your quilt. Having the grain lines on the outside edges help to keep your quilt flat. There are many different ways to calculate the cutting sizes of these corner and side setting triangles. Perhaps the easiest way is just to look up a setting triangle chart on the internet. But I worry about, about the accuracy. So I like to double check with this formula. 
To find the cutting size of a corner setting triangle, take the finished size of your block, which in this case is 4.5 or 4.5 inches, divide by 1.414, then add 7 eighths of an inch seam allowance, or 0.875. You'll end up with a number that's a little bit over 4 inches. You'll round that up to 4 and an eighth inches, and then you'll cut it on the diagonal. To find the cutting size for these side setting triangles, you want to multiply your block by 1.414 and then add one and a quarter inch seam allowance. You'll come up with a number that's close to seven and five eighths inches. So you'll cut a square seven and five eighths inches and then cut it on both of those diagonals. So you've figured out the cutting sizes of these triangles, but now you need to know how many to cut. Of the light fabric, you'll need two four and one eighth inch squares cut on the diagonal, four seven and five eighths inch squares cut on both of the diagonals. From the dark fabric, cut six four and an eighth inch squares and then cut the diagonals. Cut four seven and five eighth inch squares and then cut on both of the diagonals. Since you're working from the outside in, this border will be sewn together in four sections, two vertical and two horizontal. Lay out your side triangles. The darker fabric goes on the outside edges. The lighter fabric goes on the inside. You'll have two triangles of each fabric left over. Add the 12 dark half square triangles in the corners. Finish up with the light fabric's four corner triangles. I like to sew one section at a time. You'll be sewing in diagonal rows. Put right sides together, matching the right angles. Line up these two edges on the triangle and square. Press towards the triangles. Place the pieces back on the board. Put right sides together, matching the right angles. Sew and press. To finish up the rows, add the corner triangles. Before adding these corner square triangles, you want to find the midpoint of the triangle and the square. Match those and sew. Add the other two corner triangles. Put right sides together. Find the midpoints and sew. Lay out your rows. Put right sides together, matching the intersection. Sew and press. Add the next row in the same manner. Put right sides together. Make sure to first mat the intersections. Repeat this process with the other sections. After pressing, you might want to trim these little triangle ears on the edges of your block. Make sure that you have a quarter of an inch seam allowance between the corner of your block and the outside edge. At this point, you're ready to cut the inside section. There are many seams across each one of these sections. Often, when you finish sewing, you'll notice that one side's a little bit longer than the other one. In order to figure out the width of the piece that goes between these two, you'll want to measure through the center of each one and then find the average. To figure out the length, measure the distance between the four middle nine patch squares on each border. Find the average and then add a half inch for the seams. You didn't have to add the half inch for the shorter borders because it was already included. I cut my center piece 19 and a half by 25 and 7 eighths inches, which is close to the 19 and 5 eighths inches by 26 inches that the pattern calls for. Put right sides together and sew the top and bottom borders to the center piece, easing in if necessary. Press to the center. Add the side borders. Put right sides together, pin, and then stitch that quarter inch seam as to the center. Now you're ready to quilt this top. In the next video, you'll get some pointers for machine quilting. Thanks for visiting LearnHowToQuilt.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and share our videos with your friends.